Hello everybody, today's video is a continuation in a series of videos where I'm explaining every single default keyboard shortcut inside Premiere Pro. Today's video is going to be covering the keys of U, I, O, P, open and close bracket, and the backslash key. Let's start here. If I hit I, that creates an endpoint, and if I hit O, that creates my out point. A function of these two markers is to make selections of your footage. For instance, up here in my source monitor, if I were to hit I, and O, once you've made your selection, if you were to hit comma, it will insert that footage into your timeline. And if I were to hit period, it will overwrite the footage onto your timeline. Another place you could use in and outs is over here in your project bin. Here I'm hover scrubbing. If I hit I, it will create my endpoint. As you can see, the gray goes to blue. And then I'll make an out point right there. The same insert and overwrite hotkeys apply here too from the project bin. If I hit comma, it inserted that file. Let me zoom out a little bit. I hit period and it overwrites the footage with that clip. Another thing you can do with these is know the duration of a section in the bottom right of the program monitor. So if I were to move my out to this point right here, I can tell you that this section of clips is exactly 38 seconds and eight frames. Getting back to the hotkeys of in and outs, if you were to hit shift I, that takes your playhead to the in. If you hit shift O, that takes your cursor to the out. You can also see that denoted on Premiere Gal's amazing keyboard. That's what I'm using right here. It's made by Editor Keys in collaboration with Premiere Gal. So for that last one, I use the modifier shift, which is the color yellow. And any key on here that you see that has yellow uses that modifier. For right here, it goes to the endpoint. If I hold shift, it goes to the out point. You don't have to remember that. You can just look down at your keyboard and see it. It's pretty cool. And I'll have a link to this keyboard in the description below. Moving on to if I were to hold option and hit I, that gets rid of my endpoint. And if I hold option and hit O, that gets rid of my out point. And another way to get rid of your in and out at the same time is to hold option and X, it will clear your in and out point. And before I move on to telling you about the other keyboard shortcuts, since we're still talking about in to out, I want to create an in and out, go up to sequence and show you that you can render your effects into out or render into out. There's another way to do this with the same set of keyboard shortcuts, but it's a different function called work area bar. Now, this isn't something that I use personally today. I think it's just left over from the old school versions of Premiere Pro, but it's in there. It's still a keyboard shortcut, so I'm gonna cover it. Over here in the sequence menu, I click here and right there is work area bar. If I click that, we create a work area bar. So you can move this along. This is a section that you can render inside Premiere Pro. Notice that when I go up to sequence, instead of render effects into out, now we have render effects work area and render entire work area. The reason I'm bringing this up is because right here, if you were to hit option open bracket, that creates your endpoint for your work area. And if you hit option close bracket, that creates your ending of the work area. Now let's move on to something different, the slide tool on the U key. And if we press this, you probably guessed it, we get the slide tool. This allows you to take a clip and slide it in between two other clips like so, keeping the same in and out point. Another neat feature of this is if I were to highlight a group of clips, so I'll go back to my selection tool by hitting V, highlight a group of clips, then go back to the slide tool by hitting U, and we can do a group of clips in between these other clips on the outside. You can also make sub clips and sub sequences with the U key. And in order to show you that, I need to bring up the project panel. What better way to do that than look at the keyboard and see the word project panel on the one key. So if I hold shift and hit one, it brings up the project panel. Now this clip that I was just using, I wanna make a sub clip of. So if I click that, hit command U, this creates a sub clip. What is a sub clip? Well, you can restrict the trims of the sub clip boundaries. I'll just hit okay to showcase to you what that does. Here's that sub clip inside my project panel. I click and drag that down. If I zoom in, you can tell that I can't extend the in point or the out point because it has restricted this clip to that point. But with the original clip on the bottom, we obviously don't have that restraint on the in and out point. 
in some circumstances, you might need this if you have maybe a string out and you want to make all of the clips inside your bin the actual boundaries of that string out. And again, the other thing that you can do with this is make sub sequences. So if I were to zoom out here, I'll highlight this whole group of clips and I'll hit Shift U and this creates a sub sequence. If I bring this down onto my timeline, you can see that this just kind of looks like a nested sequence, right? And I can click on it and it just acts the same as a nested sequence. So you might be asking me, Javier, what's the difference between a subsequence and a nested sequence? Well, if I go back here to my main timeline, let me delete this. So I'm gonna highlight this, right click, and I'm going to nest this sequence. And we get this green nested sequence on the timeline. I'm gonna undo that, do the same thing, highlight all the clips, hit Shift U to make a subsequence, and do you notice the difference yourself? It's that when you create a nested sequence, it makes the nested sequence on the timeline at the same time. When you create a sub sequence, notice that all the clips stayed on the timeline. There's no nested sequence here on the timeline. Next, let's look at some shortcuts you can use in the project panel to make your workflow more efficient. The first one being thumbnail size. If you wanna use your mouse to do that, you can use this little scroll bar down here. Or if you wanna use shortcuts, you could hold shift and open bracket to make them smaller, shift and close bracket to make them larger. Another thing you can do is set a poster frame. Think of this as the thumbnail of your clip inside the project bin. So if you hover scrub over a clip and I want to create a poster frame, like right here, I can hit command P to set my poster frame. And when I move the mouse away, there is the thumbnail. To clear a poster frame, highlight the clip and hit Option P. And so once I move the mouse away, now it is set back to the original first frame of the clip. Another thing you can do down here is toggle between list and icon view. If you wanna use shortcut keys, that's shift and backslash to do that same action. If you wanna import footage into the project bin, just hit command I, and that will bring up the finder and you can import footage from there. Another way to do this is with the media browser. Let's say I wanted to use shortcut keys for that. I can hit option command I, and that will also bring that into the project bin from the media browser. Another thing that might be helpful is previewing these clips before you bring them into your project. So let me go to this clip right here. I hit Shift O and that brings up the clip in the source monitor. Same thing for footage inside my project bin. So if I hit Shift O, that brings it up here. But most of the time I just double click the clip to bring it up in the source monitor. On the P key, we have the pen tool. Tap that, we get the pen tool here inside Premiere Pro. You can do a lot of different things with this, like click and create keyframes for your clip volume, like you see me doing right here. Another thing you can do with this is click on your program monitor and create a shape. Let me undo that. If I were to bring up my effects controls window by hitting shift and right here five, click on the clip. We can also use the pen tool underneath the opacity to create an opacity mask like that. Going back to the clip, open bracket will decrease the volume, close bracket will increase the volume. If you hold shift and hit open bracket, it decreases the volume in larger increments. Likewise, going up, hold shift, do close bracket, it does it in larger increments. If we look to the right of the clip volume shortcuts, we can see zoom to sequence on the backslash key. So imagine if you're doing all this work on the keyframes here on this one clip, but then you wanna zoom back out to the entire sequence for playback, well, just hit that button and it zooms your entire timeline to the sequence. If you wanna go all the way back into where you were before, just tap the button again and it will zoom all the way back in. If you're somebody that builds graphics inside Premiere Pro and uses the Essential Graphics panel, you might wanna take a look at what you can do with the brackets here. So here I have four shapes on one graphic layer. It's a square, a circle, a triangle, and a rectangle. If I highlight the rectangle and hit Command and Open Bracket, I can move the layer down one. Same thing going upwards. So I can move the layer up and down by just holding Command and hitting the bracket. Now, if you have a bunch of layers on one graphic, you could also use Shift and Command to send the layer all the way to the back. And if I hit Shift and Command and 
close bracket, it sends it all the way to the front. Same thing if I were to hit this square, shift command, close bracket, goes to the front, shift command, open bracket, goes all the way to the back. To select different layers on the graphic, you can hold option and command, and then use your brackets to go up and down like so. And the last function that you can do by default with this set of keys inside Premiere Pro is a little bit more niche, and it has to do with the audio mixer and monitoring your inputs only. So right here, I have this set up to record from the microphone that I'm using right now, and you can't see the meters that I'm using. If I were to hit Control Shift I, you can see that my meters are now popping up and there's no longer a volume for me to adjust. That's because I'm monitoring the input. Same thing goes for if I were to sit here and hit record, hopefully it will start playing here. And as you can see, my meter on A1 is moving as I'm talking. I'll go ahead and stop that. And there is the file that I just recorded. That concludes this section of the keyboard that I'm gonna be talking about in this video. When I upload more videos in this series, you'll find them right here. If you wanna check out Premiere Gal's amazing keyboard, I'll have links in the description below. And until next time, my name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.